Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Every month, we pick a new theme to explore together through art making and play. In these workshops, you can watch along any time you have time to make, or listen, or just watch. We encourage young people, families, and creative people of all ages to join us every week on Saturdays at 11 a.m. as we release a new episode. These videos are for you. Whether you want to join us on Saturday when they become available or any time you want to make. We're so glad you're watching. Have you missed a week? Check out artstarts.com slash explores dash online or any of our videos on YouTube or Facebook to check out an episode you've missed. Okay, let's explore together. Before we begin making, let's review the three rules of explores. We've got rules in quotes here because they're less rules and more like guidelines or things that we like to have in mind before we start making together. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by checking in with ourselves every day before we start making. Maybe we didn't have a good night's sleep or we're feeling really good today. Whatever it is, we want to take the time to check in with ourselves. We also practice respect by doing the same thing for each other. And if we're not making alone, we're making with other grown-ups, or other youth, or friends, or classmates. We want to practice respect by asking them how they're feeling as well, so we can be mindful of each other while we make together. Another way we practice respect is with our tools. That can be about putting them away when we're all finished or using them safely. If somebody else is waiting for a turn to use a tool, we can use our words or our signs and share. We can respect each other by asking how long they'll need the tool so we can move on to something else, or if we need it now, we can let them know when we will be done and tell them we will pass them the tool when we're finished. We can also practice respect by acknowledging the land. So this space that you see here is my studio space. And I'm on the stolen or unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations as an uninvited guest on these lands. One of the ways I practice respect is by acknowledging where I'm coming from and to be respectful of the lands, waters, and to the indigenous people who are here and who have been here since time immemorial while I have access to these lands. You can practice respect by finding out the territories and lands where you are watching and making from today, and by being the best guest you can and respecting the host nations, the lands, and waterways where you live. The second rule is that nothing is for keeps. I encourage you whenever possible to take things from the recycling bin. You can take paper that's already been drawn on, or has writing on the back, or is ripped, and then you don't have to feel worried about ripping it up yourself, or crumpling it, or just trying something out. It doesn't have to be good or perfect the first time, because it's not for keeps. And when we're all finished, I encourage you to take it apart. That helps really make it so that it isn't for keeps. Because if you know you're gonna take it apart at the end, you don't have to make any finished thing. You can try all the things and ways of making. Our last rule is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or even to turn out bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful and creative ideas are good regardless of what happens after we try something. If you already know how something is going to turn out, if you've done it before, we can be open to trying something completely new and practice surprise. And if it doesn't turn out, that's okay. It's not for keeps. These are the three rules that we like to keep in mind when we explore together every week. Okay, let's get making together.
Hello everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. This month we're going to explore something called equivalence, which basically means copies or other versions of things. In this first week of making, I thought what we could explore is questions of why we can or should copy. When somebody copies your artwork or something that you made, how does it make you feel? For some people, it might make them feel really good because it means that somebody liked their work so much that they wanted to do it too. For other people, when somebody copies your work, it can make you feel upset that somebody didn't ask for your permission or that somebody's not giving you credit for, or, or um, sharing that they got the idea from you. They're not, basically they're not thanking you or acknowledging you or bringing you into the conversation or act of doing that work. And that can feel, that can feel bad, especially as you get, uh, as you get to a point where if you are ever going to make artwork and you were going to sell it, if you stole somebody's idea or copied or took somebody's idea and then you got paid for it and not paid in money, even if you got a candy or a thank you and somebody else didn't, that can be really unfair. There are lots of artists, but also communities where their work, um, their artwork, their ideas, their culture has been taken or copied by people uh, who then benefit or gain um, or get money or popularity or friends from, um, from taking credit we're saying that it was them who came up with the idea. So today what we wanted to do was I wanted to explore this idea of copying and when it's all right, how best to um, have a conversation with somebody and how to practice copying in a respectful way. So for this week for exploring, I'm going to have some paper and I found a stack of paper in my recycling bin and remember you don't have to have um, clean perfect paper it could have writing on one side you could have used it before it could be ripped because everything that we're making this week is not for keeps we're just trying things out the other thing that you should have is a mark making tool and a mark making tool can really be anything. It could be markers, it could be crayons, it could be pencil crayons, it could be charcoal, it could be chalk, it could be anything that you can use to make a mark. What we're going to do is we're going to start with a piece of paper and any piece of paper, any size, doesn't have to be perfect, right? Just whatever paper you find. And we're gonna make a mark that's unique to us. So take your mark making tool and make a mark. There's no right or wrong way to do this. There we go. I made a mark. I wasn't really thinking about it when I got started. I just made a mark of whatever came out of my wrist. And because I didn't really think about it, it's unique to me. I give you permission to copy this mark. And so that's one way that you can explore copying is, is you can ask for permission. If you see a classmate or a grown up or you go to an art gallery and 
um, the, the people who work there say, yep, you have permission to try drawing or making a copy of something that you can see for just your, yourself, for your sketchbook, or for trying out or for exploring, then that's great. We have permission to copy. If I said, you don't have permission to copy, this is mine. How does that make you feel? Are you frustrated? Are you okay with it? That's important too. It's important that you respect that I said you can't copy it, but it's also important and okay for you to feel sad or frustrated that you can't copy it. It doesn't mean that you feeling sad or upset or however you're feeling means that you can copy, but those feelings are real and it's important to take a second and go, yep, I feel sad because I would like to do this. And then we can go and do something else. Just because we feel sad or frustrated or we really want to do something doesn't give us permission to not respect somebody else's work. One of the other ways that we can practice copying when we don't know or we don't have permission. So for example, I'm here and I've given you permission to copy my work. But what if it's famous work? Or what if you don't know the person who created the work? Or it's somebody who you just haven't seen for a really long time? I still encourage you to see if you can get permission by asking, sending an email, sending a text, asking a friend who knows a friend. Going through those steps and getting permission is important. But if we're just copying something for ourselves, for our sketchbooks, for exploring today that nobody else is going to see, then it's a different kind of copying. It's just an exploration of somebody else's idea. It's a chance to see different ways that it could be done. So for example, if this marker wasn't here and you just saw this picture, you might go, well, how do I do this? How do I get this exact shape or this exact color? Or how do I get it so that it lines up on the page just like this? In those cases, you're not trying to um, steal anybody's work. You're just trying to figure out about the technique, to learn more about it, to explore it. As long as you're not going to show it to somebody else or share it or claim that it was yours, then absolutely, I encourage you to do some looking, find things that you like to look at or that you're not sure how it was done, and then explore to see if you can do it. So here, I use this marker to begin with, but let's say you had a purple marker and went, okay, that's all right. I don't need it to be the same color, but I'm going to see what they did or what Kay did to try and make this shape. Okay, so I'm going to start by making some marks. All right, that's about, oh, that's not the same size. So I'm going to want to make sure I use this side of the marker. Okay, all right. And then I had the circle here in this line here, and this curve here. So what do I feel that I could do the easiest? Well, probably the line in the center. Okay. And then this over here, this feels like a pretty simple shape for me to try. So I'm going to just, there we go. All right, that wasn't hard. I think I could do that. If I ever wanted to use that shape in another picture, I feel like I could do it. But what did they do here? There's kind of this thicker mark over here and this circle down here and how far does it go down? And so all of these questions that you can be asking while you're looking are really important to exploring art and creativity. By looking and problem solving through um, copying, 
you can learn all these really cool things that you might not think of if you're just looking at the picture all by itself. We're really cutting this up into parts in our brain and going, this is one section, this is one section, and this is one section. And those are all really important and excellent questions to ask. Because I made this shape, I know that what I did was I looped over here and then I curled over here. There we go. It's not perfect. It was still me who did it, but I got some ideas. I tried some things out by doing it. I could keep going and go, okay, well, now I know that this uh, started here. Maybe, maybe they started at the bottom. Oh, that still doesn't quite look right. What if they started at the top? Well, that still doesn't look right. Is it because of the size? And so you can keep practicing until you feel like you've got the technique down. Then all of a sudden you can take the things that you learned by doing by copying the technique and you can make your own piece based on what you learned. So before I said I didn't want to use the thick, but now I know this, um, how to make this mark. So now I'm going to try it with a thick marker because this is me wanting to try it now. I kind of like that. I kind of like those swirls, but you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of a flower. And so I'm going to, there we go. And so I was inspired by this. I practiced this technique, but ultimately this thing that I created, this flower here, was my own mark. And maybe if I was going to share this with somebody later on, I could say I learned this technique by looking at Kay's uh, drawing that I really liked. And that's a way of honoring or respecting the techniques of someone else. So uh, we can copy when we're trying to learn the technique of how something is done um, and, and answer questions that we have. Something else that can be really uh, interesting and fun to do when you are exploring copying or equivalence, so something that is the same but a little bit different, is to take a really famous piece of artwork. So I have my tablet here. I hope you can see this. But this is a painting by Emily Carr. And it's called Forest, British Columbia. And so this, this painting is, um, is pretty famous. If uh, you start to learn about a piece of art, or if you really enjoy an image, and you spend some time looking and exploring and researching a piece of art, then what you might want to do is go, okay, well, I, I got, I've got some information. I've done some time and I've, uh, I wanted to respect the, the artist or the person who created this thing by learning more about them. But now I want to, um, I want to create something myself. And so for me, I live, on uh, unceded and occupied territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh people. Um, I live on uh, Coast Salish land where uh, Emily Carr did a lot of her work. And so for me, the trees that she paints are something that are, um, that is a similar experience. So I may not have seen the exact same trees as her, but I have seen trees like her. I do live here. And so the subject matter, so the things that she is drawing and exploring are really important to me, are something that I have in common with her. And so what I might do is go, well, I share this experience, so I'm going to try and do an equivalent or a copy of this picture, but I'm going to bring my own experience to this work. So I might have something to say or something to share in my drawings that Emily Carr didn't because I live at a different, I live in a different time. So um, Emily Carr painted this 
in the uh, 1930s. And so I live in a completely different century than she does. Um, I have access to these Sharpie markers and pens, and she used uh, oil and charcoal. So I'm changing a whole bunch of different things while I'm exploring the same ideas or even a similar look to uh, what she painted here in this picture. So I'm gonna take a couple of different markers. In fact, I'm gonna find all my greens. There we go. Those are all my green markers. And then she's got some browns and oranges and reds. So really going to take some time and appreciate and look at the thing that we want to copy. And then I have lots of black markers. Okay, I think that's probably all the reds and browns. And then um, there's some blues. I'm going to pull up my white too because there's some white here. I feel like I could probably do this here. I'll pull out a black marker as well, just, just in case. All right, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do some looking. And I know that whatever I do um, in copying this, it's not going to be exactly the same. And because we're just exploring, I don't have to worry about it being exactly the same. In fact, what I could write down here, when we started to try something or explore, is we could actually write the name of the person who made the item or the picture that we're copying. So I'm gonna go Emily Carr, and then I'm gonna go Forest. British Columbia. I'm gonna leave it down at the bottom there. Even though I know that I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put this in the recycling bin when I'm all done trying, I'm still, I'm going to take a moment and I'm actually going to write down the person who did this work. And that's another way that I can show respect. Okay, so what if we were going to do copying where it was just we were exploring color? Remember how I said that I'm, I'm from um, Coast Salish or British Columbia as well, the Coast Salish territory. Um, so I wanted to see if uh, these colors will make a tree that is similar to something that I've seen before. And so I'm gonna start with blue. And I'm gonna go, okay, there were these, there's these blue marks here. Oh, and it goes like right to the end of the page over here. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm just checking it out. I'm just copying to see what happens, to see if it's similar to my experience. Okay, so there's some blue there. Hmm, does that look like a tree? That I've seen before? Not really. I can't really think of any trees, but maybe water. Sometimes in, uh, in the forest or near the mountains uh, of where I live, there's kind of a, there's these blue here. So maybe, maybe Emily Carr meant that this was like the water um, that she would find in forests. I don't know, I can't ask her. And while there's um, some people who have written about her and there's some books that I could go find out more about it, I don't have her to ask. And so I get to ask all these questions that go, I wonder, I wonder if she thought this. I wonder, I wonder what she thought when she made this mark or this mark. Okay, so I added a bit more dark down there. It's like, all right, so maybe, maybe this is like water. Or maybe when trees get really dark at night, that's what she was trying to do with the blue. Hmm. I don't know, maybe. And then there was this tree trunk over here. At least that's what it feels like to me. It looks like a tree trunk. It comes down, um, down to the roots and then the grass. And so I'm gonna try that. It doesn't have to be perfect lines, right? I'm just gonna put down a whole bunch of brown here. Looks like it came over to here. I'm gonna go over the name because again, it was just to have their name or her name be a part of my exploration. 
I'm going to get rid of this later because it's just, it's not for keeps. Okay, what else? What other colors do we see in here? I see kind of, I, I kind of see some black along the edge here. And then there's like some bark marks. Kind of comes over here. And so we're looking at all these different things and we're looking really closely because to copy, we really have to pay attention to all these marks or else it doesn't really look like a copy. Then we're just kind of inspired by, and that's okay too, but we're trying to create an equivalent. We're trying to create like another version uh, that means something to us. All right, kind of, oh, you know what? Over here as well, right? I'm drawing over the words, that's okay. So Emily Carr and uh, the, the original painting is actually becomes a part of my drawing down here. Okay, I think I see some blue down here. Would you ever thought to put blue in a tree painting? That can be really great as well when you're looking at these different things is that uh, you can discover colors that you would never have used um, before checking out somebody else's version of a of a picture, especially if you've got that experience. And then there's some red here. So what's cool about this is that next time um, I go out into the forest and I check out trees, I'm gonna look for blue and I'm gonna look for reds and see if I can find those colors when I go exploring. There's so much we can learn by trying out and making copies. Okay, I still feel weird about this blue here. So I think, I think I'm gonna need some, some green. And so there's this big green area over here. Marks over here, and then it curls around here. And I could just put color down on the page, but I'm actually looking as I add these marks to the page of what different marks Emily Carr put in her paintings. So she, she has these kind of brush marks that go like in these swirl lines here, and then these hash marks that happen along here. And then there's the blue again. So this kind of came over here, and then those marks were there, and there were those marks over there. Oh, it looks like there's some yellow in there as well. I don't know if the yellow is going to turn out on top of my green, but let's find out. Not really. Oh, but I do like how it shows up in some of the white places. Great. All right. I know there's way more blue here, but I think this is enough inspiration for me. I think this is enough copying. Now what I could just do is go, okay, so this tree was like Emily Carr and um, Emily Carr's um, picture is a part of my exploration now, but now I'm gonna, I'm just gonna add my own trees in here. I'm not actually gonna copy. I'm not really looking anymore. I'm gonna take some of the ideas um, that I learned, some forest down here um, from, from trying to explore, but the rest of this, I'm gonna make my own. And I'm gonna go over this blue because I still feel kind of weird about this blue and that's okay, right? Because this is now my version of it. But I wouldn't have known how I felt about that blue unless I tried it myself. I do like the blue in the trunk. Maybe I wouldn't have done that before um, if I hadn't tried copying this picture. I'm going to bring some marks over here now so that it's the same on both sides. In fact, you know what? I'm going to cover all of the blue because I'm allowed, because we're just exploring and I'm not being um, 
disrespectful to the work because this is just, I'm just trying something. I'm not going to, I'm not going to show this um, to anybody else. I mean, I'm showing you and we're trying this thing together, but I'm not going to put this uh, in a frame and I'm not going to stick it on the fridge so that everybody can see it. This is just an experiment just to see what happens. I wonder if I can cover this anymore. Yeah, there we go. Oh, but you know what? Now I kind of like the blue underneath the green because it looks like this part of the tree was darker than these other parts. I just needed to add some green so that I, I could like it. You know what? I think I need some green back here for the trees that are in the background. And then she did some interesting blue stuff over here. I'm going to copy that again. I'm going to put some blue in between my trees. I like that. That could be like the sky or the mountains in the background. And then maybe I'll add some, some black down here like she has. So I've gone back. I said I wasn't going to do any more with her, but now I'm going to take some of her techniques and bring it back into my version of these trees. And there we go. So if I was going to show somebody else who didn't watch us make this and say, this is my version, or I was inspired by Emily Carr's um, forest British Columbia painting, somebody who's seen this painting might go, oh yeah, I recognize it because of this big blue part here, or I recognize it because of this trunk here. Um, or they might go, it doesn't look anything like that. And then it, you get the opportunity to then have a conversation with somebody and go, oh yeah, well, I was just trying something. Um, I, this is what I learned. And you can tell them about that. Of course, if you're not sharing it, like I suggest uh, you do, you could just tell them about the experience. You could share what you learned, and then the two of you, from what you learned, could try something new, being inspired and having copied um, the techniques and the ideas without exactly copying the work of someone else. There are lots of reasons you should try uh, exploring copying, and we're going to explore other ways of uh, looking at equivalents or equal parts or same but a little bit different throughout the month but i encourage you to find some of your favorite pictures or paintings or in your storybooks if there's an illustration or a picture that you really like copying it to see how close you can get to see how the person who drew the original piece got that finished like i do for every one of our workshops i'm going to leave the video running a little bit as I clean up my space, I'm going to recycle all of these pieces here and put them into the recycling bin because nothing is for keeps. And I look forward to exploring with you again next week as we explore more equivalents. See you soon. <laughs>